Sim Update 10 for Microsoft Flight Simulator is finally available. Additionally, massive performance increases are coming to the Sim, if you can afford it of course, with the brand new NVIDIA RTX 4000 series. Here, DLSS 3 support will deliver roughly a 100% boost to performance. Rather nice numbers. So let's jump straight into it. So what is DLSS support? For those of you who aren't regular gamers or may not be aware of this sort of information, it's a way of using AI to upscale an image. The sim or the game will render the visuals at a slightly lower resolution, so maybe 720p, and then upscale it maybe to 1080p, 1440p, or maybe even 4K. So it's a way to get the improved visuals whilst only rendering at a lower resolution. Basically, this gives you a massive increases in performance. Now, of course, the NVIDIA DLSS support when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator is a huge focus at the moment, and that is because Sim Update 10 finally brings support for the technology. On the screen right here, you can see the DLSS options. You can navigate through these to choose whether you prefer performance or quality. In a previous video, I took a close look at this, even going as far to compare DLSS to other methods of upscaling. But I want to do this again with the final release, but for now, I think I'm going to wait on the latest NVIDIA of the drivers. For now though, know and be aware that this will give you a much needed boost in performance. But talking of performance increases, the real performance boost is going to come with the brand new graphics cards, the RTX 4000 series. These were announced just yesterday, and will include the latest and newest version of NVIDIA's upscaling technology. It turns out that Flight Simulator will be able to support this tech, and as you can see from the footage on screen, and keep in mind this is promo material, it does add some significant boots. Of course, we don't know what settings they're using on the left versus the right, we only know that one has RTX on and the other RTX off. It's going to be a while until we get hands-on experience with these cards and therefore be able to do a true and fair comparison with Flight Simulator. But even still, this very early footage is very interesting to see. Now, the new NVIDIA graphics cards will come in a range of different specs. There'll be the top-end RTX 4090. This will be arriving on the 12th of October. The next slightly lower spec burst card for the RTX 4080 will be launching in November, but doesn't have an exact release date just yet. There will actually be two versions of the 4080. Now, the real pinch here, the real kicker, is going to be the price points for these. The RTX 4090 is going to be released at a starting price of £1,679. Yes, you heard that right. Meanwhile, the 4080 16GB version will be releasing at £1,269, whilst the 12GB version will release at £949. That is a massive increase over what we saw with the release prices of the RTX 3000 series. But apparently, the 4000 series are two to four times faster than their 3000 series equivalent, depending on which game is actually being used. In terms of Microsoft Flight Simulator then, this performance increase, this potential performance increase, is very, very good news. But it's also quite a hard kick, as these prices, in my opinion at least, are very high. Pretty much on the, uh, well, way too high actually. Unfortunately though, it is what it is. Now, moving back to a Sim Update 10. In addition to DLSS support, it's also getting some boosts and performance increases to the DirectX 12 implementation. Now, for the true benefit of this, we're going to have to wait for the next game-ready driver for NVIDIA. No release date on that just yet, but hopefully it's not too far away. Meanwhile, we can also now use multi-monitor support. I've covered this in a previous video, but I'm going to look at it very briefly on the screen right here just in case you're wondering how to activate it and how it performs. So to use it, you simply go into the experimental menu that you can find in the options screen, and that's down there on the bottom left. And yes, unfortunately, this is only available on the PC version. You won't be able to do this on the Xbox version. Now, in my tests from the beta, I did this on three different monitors, the central, the main one, as well as one to the right and another to the left. But you can use way more than the three monitors. Microsoft Flight Simulator actually supports up to seven individual monitors now, although I'd really like to see the PC that would be capable of running that type of setup. But this is definitely something for the future and always seems to be the focus when it comes to Asobo and Microsoft for this particular sim. 
Now, personally, I've found the multi-monitor support to be very good, although it does deliver a pretty hefty and significant uh, performance hit. Very likely, uh, most people will be fully aware of that and expecting it, though. Elsewhere in the update, we've got a brand new Garmin G1000 NXi. This has been improved and worked upon by Working Title and is now the default G1000 that you can use within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Some great work here. We've also got a brand new VFR map, again designed by Working Title. Yet another really nice improvement. Now, overall, the sim update delivers a lot of significant fixes and improvements. I'll be going through most of these in another future video once I've had time to get to grips with them and work through them and gather together all the necessary footage. For now though, we've got a bit of an overview and one of the main things I wanted to talk about was that great news from Nvidia on the 4000 series graphics cards. For now, that brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.